Welcome everyone to this uh, great TNP and Europea uh, uh, radio broadcast. We have here today um, me, the Minister of Radio in the North Pacific, Koopa. We have the Deputy um, Minister Deputy of Radio, Minister Bobarino. Radio, Bobarino. Hello. And we have with us two extra guests, um, if you'll please introduce yourselves. Uh, hi, I am President UPC. Uh, hello, I'm Sacrio. I'm the Minister of Radio over in Europe. Yeah. So two very, uh, very important guests with us today. Um, we're here um, primarily to discuss the regions, discuss kind of um, diplomacy between the two regions, just some just some overall kind of getting to get some talking between the two regions uh, going on and allowing the audience to perhaps ask questions about um, our ask uh, the have the audience ask questions about our our regions as well. Um, but to start, um, we'll kind of get the obligatory explanations out of the way. Um, why don't um, our guests go first and tell us a bit about uh, your region for those in TNP who might not be aware of uh, Europea? Uh, well, Euro is a democratic uh, UCR. That's a user-created region. Uh, was founded on March 6, 2007, so it's been around for a little while. Uh, founded by King Hem, the illustrious. Uh, and we are currently a frontier. Um, I am both president, who is like, you know, the head of government and also the delegate. Um, we have a pretty expansive government. Uh, it's kind of our whole shtick. Uh, and we definitely love our elections. We're going through an election right now. Uh, voting just started like two hours ago, I think. Uh, so we'll see the results of that tomorrow. And yeah. Yeah, neat. Nate, do you have anything to add? Um, I don't have much more to add. Um, I think EPC has done a pretty good job of explaining who we are as a region. Um, obviously quite old, I think. I lived in 2007. That is now older than um, quite a lot of our citizenry. Um, but yeah, um, it's uh, I mean, I, it's certainly a great place to be. Um, obviously, as UPC mentioned, we are currently going through an election. So exciting times are up ahead in Europe. Yeah. Neat, neat. Uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's always so it's cool to have the UPCs on, uh, just to hear them talk because their culture I feel is always a, a little different, just because it's it's a user created region. Like you have like a founder kind of in the sense uh, opposed to us. Um, bring us to that. Uh, for those in Euro who don't know anything about the North Pacific, uh, the North Pacific is a democratic GCR that is a game created region. We were created when the game was created i believe um that's like november oh, yeah, 2002 absolutely. something like that yeah sometime i believe in 2002 um a very long time ago um we do not have a founder our founder is uh god emperor max Berry, i believe um and yeah we are not going through an election currently we will go through an election in uh september uh we're also the largest region in the game i believe at least, um, yeah, one of the largest regions in the entire game. Uh, we have a very robust um, government and military. Um, uh, yeah, very, very, very large, very robust system. Um, yeah, very similar to Euro, I think is why our two um, regions have gotten along so well for so long. Um, so, um, I guess moving on to that, we can kind of talk about the relationship um, the the two regions have with one another. Um, uh, we can indeed. Um, I mean, yeah, it's uh, well. I think that that relationship <laughs> predates all of us by yeah, some time, it's, right? Like, yeah. It's it's a very uh, it's a very old relationship. Um, the it's a relationship yeah, the arguably as robust as the regions themselves and our democracies therein. I feel as if Euro and TNP 
are tied at the hip in terms of gameplay and in terms of any interregional stance they may take. Uh, TNP and Euro are often in complete and utter lockstep. Um, and I think that there are, I, I think that there are some cultural differences between, you know, UCRs and GCRs, but I think a lot of those things are superficial uh, at the end of the day. And that, yes, our regions are similar. And I think that's part of why we get along so well. We also have a, a treaty dating, I think we're, it's the, the friendship treaty between the North Pacific and Europa that I think was signed sometime back in like 2013 or something. Um, 2013, so we have a, yeah. Yeah, we have a very, very long-standing treaty and a very long-standing friendship that uh, I really see no sign of slowing down. You, uh, I've always considered Europea to be one of our, our like, one of our strongest partners, at least in my opinion, from my experience in, in TNP. I don't speak for the government here, but um, I've always found Euro to be very close to us. So it's always yeah. a pleasure to come here and, and do this show. I think... Um... Bob's words were really well said, you know, and Euro and TNP have, you know, their differences for sure. And, you know, Euro is more defender now than it was, you know, in 2013, certainly, but, but, you know, when I started the game as well, um, whereas TNP has retained their independence streak. Um, but even through that, I think that our people are very similar. We see the game in a very similar way, and it makes us stronger when we work together. And I'm glad that we've retained such a strong relationship, even through all of the changes that have happened in the last, you know, 11 years. Indeed. And and uh, our, our, our militaries are relatively similar. Um, uh, I don't know how in-depth we can really go on that, but, you know, we, we are both independents, ours, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, naturally. Um, but naturally, you know, part of the treaty, we're supposed to, you know, cooperate with each other and then defend each other. And I think that's really one of the many really strong bonds that we, we have as, or as regions, is our military cooperation. For sure. And we saw that recently with the uh, COCD takeover. Do you yes. want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, I mean, we can talk a bit about it. Are you authorized to talk about that? I don't know if I should uh, be I... prompting you to do that. Uh, I can... mm. We are public about it. Let me double check. Yeah, think we, we, can, we can edit this out if, if I say something I'm not supposed to, but I believe we went public about it very recently. Yes, we did. It's in our public defense thread now. So yeah, re recently the um, the North Pacific, in collaboration with a great many of our of our of our great allies, was able to um, have a uh, was able to uh, maybe not take over is the right word, but was able to um, re refound effectively the Confederation of Corrupt Dictators and take control of the region. Um, it was a it was a collective effort through us and in many of our of our allies, but um, we thank you a lot. And Euro was involved in that. That kind of goes to show that military cooperation that we've had. Um, I gotta say, it felt real, real nice. Yeah, those nations. It felt I'm, real, real nice. Banjectic nations from CCD after that Dell tip those years ago. I'm I'm hoping Euro <laughs> felt as as pleased about it as, as we did. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. think that we our hope that the joy <laughs> is shared among all. <laughs> our antagonism is a little less personal than yours is, I would say, because you know CCD is famous for trying to right. you know subvert you guys specifically. But yes. we were very happy for you when that uh, up, when that opportunity presented itself. Yeah. So for, for those listening who aren't aware, a few years back, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Bob might remember better than me. 22. Was it 2022? Oh God, I feel old. 
uh, right. more feels like a long time. But back in 2022, there was a a coup attempt is a strong word to describe what occurred. But effectively, they were uh, members of the CCD were trying to um, subvert um, TNP and were trying to, um, if I remember correctly, take control of the region um, through like puppets or something like an election, I believe. Bob might remember this better than me. It's been uh, a hot minute. I remember it involved United Massachusetts, and he was going to be the point, so to speak. Um, and I, be- I believe that it, the, the object of the plan was to get United Massachusetts installed as delegate and then go from there. Um, at that point in, secu- in TNP's internal security council uh, procedures, we would then recognize the vice delegate as the legal delegate uh, and go from there from a gameplay perspective. Um, but thankfully, we, uh, we got wind of it. I forget exactly how, but... We did. Um, I I know it involved at least one person coming forward and testifying about it in TNP court, um, which de- which did end up decreasing their sentence by a, a by a significant amount. Um, so yeah, it was a it was it was quite the scare. So when when TNP says we're we're very happy about this, we are. You're quite ecstatic uh, to uh, have finally um, been able to 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 tip that region, and we and we thank the um, and, and we thank um, you know we thank our allies and our partners for their um, assistance in that uh, regard. Well, uh, um, I'm not personally active in um, nation state warfare anymore, although I have been for a number of years. Um, previously back in the mid 2010s um but what i will say is um god bless the uh, ern and god bless our troops yes as um i will uh, yeah definitely we had a, a great turnout from all, all parties um there was one of the largest mpa turnouts i we've seen in quite a while um, as our troops went to to take that, so definitely God bless our troops and, and God bless the troops of our allies for um, their assistance in all that endeavor. And God bless the rum. Keep the rum flowing. Exactly. <laughs> here, here. And I guess that's um, we can kind of you know speaking of of the the rum of TNP. Um, there are it's interesting to discuss the internal cultures of the regions because there's a lot of things like like you know the T- the north pacific has as rum and uh phlegm and spit. yeah they they all have their own little cultural ideas so let's what so euro how does euro kind of what's the culture of euro like how does it kind of uh, culturally represent itself um yeah uh, what's the culture of euro like what a question um <laughs> We don't have any regional beverage uh, like you or TSP has, which is kind of an oversight on our part. Uh, We've had some discussions recently about making it either red wine or chocolate milk, uh, but those didn't really go anywhere, so we'll see how that pans out in the future. Um, I think a lot of Euro's culture is kind of revolved around arguing. Um, <laughs> Speaking of, of things that, TNP and Europe have in common. <laughs> no kidding. Most of that arguing is about, you know, internal politics. Like like I said earlier, we really do love our politics and our elections. Um, and we have a lot of opinions and are not afraid to share them. Um, so you'll see that fairly frequently if you pop into Eurochat or happen to like check our forum or whatever. Um, God help you if you have access to the Grand Hall, because things get really interesting there sometimes. Um, we also have a fascinating uh, connection with religion. And we talked about this a little bit in a radio show last week, um, where we, we summarized the history of religion in Euro. 
um, but we have a bunch of them. Uh, no official state religion, again, uh, but I would say that the unofficial state religion is Nephilism. Praise be. Uh, yes, hail Nephil. Um, and the story behind that is basically that um, our founder, Hem, and chief admin, Lethen, had way too much free time on their hands in the late 2000s slash early 2010s. Uh, and they made a bunch of like silly form accounts just to play around with. And one of the things that they did was kind of reverse their name. So Hem made the account Meh, and then Nethin made Nethel, which is not a perfect like reversal of Lethin, but it's more pronounceable, so it works. Uh, and they just posted a bunch of nonsense. And then like, Five years later, another one of our former admins slash longtime old people, uh, Sopo, uh, collected a bunch of these works of Nethel uh, and turned into a religion. And for 10 years now, we've kind of just run with that. Uh, it's a little confusing because Nethel was supposed to be like the opposite of Lethen, but when Nethel became popular, Lethen kind of co-opted that and kind of turned Nethel into another um like piece of his being a little weird we don't want to talk about it too much you know religion's confusing as always uh blah 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 um but that's nephilism uh and in addition to nephilism we have the shrine of swift who worship of course taylor swift um and then a new religion that's popped up in the last couple of years is the uh the church of lard uh, the Holy Book of Which is the Great Book of Lard, uh, which is written by Grandfather Clock. And if you want to read an excerpt of the Book of Lard, which is genuinely fascinating, uh, I suggest you check out our most recent uh, foreign update, which I happened to just post on your forum earlier today. Yeah. Fascinating. I had no idea. Very, very There's interesting. A There's a lot yeah. going on there. Um, 50 minutes ago, wow. Yeah. I think just to add on to um, UPC's very comprehensive statement about our religions, um, I think, I, I believe we had at one point um, Pope elections. Um, they were quite interesting, um, but I'm not sure what happened to them. Um, but aside from our um, sort of uh, religion and Taylor Swift obsessed um, citizenry. I think we are a region very much based on social cohesion. Um, I think a lot of our citizenry do really enjoy just sitting down and talking to each other, getting to know each other, um, unwinding after a long hard day at work or whatever people are. Um, but at the same time, we are a region built on political discourse and um, activity. Um, as UPC mentioned, um, our Grand Hall um, channel and our Discord server has seen a lot of activity recently. Um, there's been a bit of a discussion today, um, uh, which has been interesting. Um, and obviously, we do like our elections uh, currently one ongoing right now, which I mentioned um, previously. Um, so yeah, um, definitely very socially active, very politically active, and we do like our um, interesting quirky um religions yes T tnp has a a somewhat similar culture in regards to how often we argue uh if you get access to the uh the regional assemblies hall uh, god help you as well um oh no oh <laughs> no don't go in there don't, don't go in there love a pitchfork yeah, um, but I think I think that's the sign of a healthy democracy, and I think that kind of goes to show just how strong of a democrat of a demo of let's say democratic presence that Euro and TNP have is that we 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 love our our elections and our democracy so much that we'll spend hours of our day arguing about them, um, which I think is hard. It's 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 good and healthy for for uh, democracies to do this. Um, uh, it's kind yeah, of an really yeah, as as we don't TNP doesn't have um a like a made like a lot of different religions. Um, the only one I really know of is 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 Flem. Thank you, Flem. Flem, praise Flem, really. Um, great, one of the great heroes of old from uh, a bajillion years ago through one of TNP's many uh 
conflicts with itself. Um, Fun was uh, one of the many, um, or I should say the whole thing, uh, if I could even pronounce the whole thing. Uh, Flamingovia. Yeah, Flamingovia. it's Flamingovia. I'm reading it. Don't put a dyslexic person on call. Um, Flamingovia, a very old um, member of TNP, served in the uh, one of the many, um, many, um, the many old um, kind of, I guess, dictatorships is kind of the right word to use, um, as TNP had many um, problems starting out. Um, Bum is a true hero of the underground. Really, um, really worked hard to to protect the nation and and served in many positions. It's really, really a great character. Um, and really, we should have Flum look out for all of us as he as they did the region. We only can hope that in our time of need, Flum will return and come back and protect us too. Um, yeah, we don't we don't have the fun the fun little religions other than that one, but we definitely have the arguing. Oh, so much. Um, I don't find that TMP's arguing is is like awful. It's just no. you know healthy debate, just as is you might see in in any any uh, any government in democracy. Yeah, um, we also have uh, so uh, yeah. large healthy debates. Um, but as with any region, I imagine across the Asian states, um, there are certain topics which get people really, really. Um, riled up and they're really passionate about it um, and you can probably imagine where that leads uh, down that path yeah there's a, there's some definitely some some topics here in TNP that if you mention um, you'll get some responses get some get some feathers ruffled and those are always fun uh, at least to watch from a safe distance I don't uh, tend to chime into the IRL politics or, or I'll, IRL politics channel <laughs> oh, yeah. as often as I probably would otherwise. I, I don't Just know if Euro the, has like a real life channel, but <laughs> the milieu in there is not all that tolerable. We do. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't spend a lot of time in there either. So, so going up NS politics thing. Yeah. But but going off of, of real life politics, um, you know, we each uh, regions have similar government structures, but um, it'd be I'm not sure exactly how much they differ between the two of them. Obviously, you're both democracies with with elected um, kind of um, heads of state. Um, so, but we we both have a parliamentary system, so or some kind of assembly system. Uh, Euro has you said is the Grand Hall. What's well, we have. Um... We had, so our legislative branch is the Senate, and the Grand Hall is a um, part of our forums, originally now part of the Discord as well, where citizens not involved in the Senate and obviously senators as well can go and they can talk about um, regional issues, um, et cetera, et cetera. But the actual legislative branch is the Senate. And that's just like... A... Like, would you, like, apply to join that and stuff? Yeah, so this, the Senate, um, I think we are, I don't think it's changed, so um, UPC can correct me if I'm wrong, but we um, elect senators on uh, uh, a 90-day term. There are elected every 90 days. Um, I think they usually, they're staggered with um, the presidential election. So our next um, general election, which is when we elect the senators, is in 35 days, just over a month. Um, yeah, so um, citizens can stand, they can post platforms, and then the chancellery will open elections and um, whoever wins gets elected. Um, but obviously, because it's, um, we also elect the number of seats um, that the Senate can have, so the minimum number of seats the Senate can have is five. I don't think there's a maximum number, um, but the past few Senates have been quite small Senates. Um, so we elect the number of seats as well, and then based on the number of seats that are elected, that's um, the citizens who receive the highest number of votes in order from let's say if there's five seats from first place to fifth place that get elected um provided that they received um well it's 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 no yeah that, that's i think that's correct um elections are every 70 days not 90 days uh, so are they 70 and... now to be changed them 
It's always been seven. Has it? Uh, it felt longer. It felt late. It felt yeah. longer when I was in Senate. <laughs> nope. Um, and I want to say that there's a max to this number of Senate seats. It's like eleven, maybe. Oh, um, um, but the typical high. formula is it's five is the minimum, and then it's the number of people that run minus two. So if nine people run, we have a choice between five, six, or seven Senate seats. And then there are two polls when people vote. So you vote for however many candidates you want. And then you can also vote uh, for how many seats you want the Senate to have. Oh, so what election elected positions do you guys have other than the senators? Resident. Yeah, the president and vice president. Um, okay. And the cabinet and is appointed. The president and vice okay. president then appoint the cabinet who are uh, confirmed by the Senate. And our judiciary is pretty much the same. They're nominated by the president, confirmed by the Senate. And then we also have a regional security council as a frontier, and that's the same. So the, well, it's the delegate. Um, so the president nominates the delegate and vice delegate, and then the delegate and vice delegate nominate counselors, and again, these are all Senate confirmed. So so the, the world assembly delegate of the region is is different than the sitting president? That's correct. Interesting. UBC and it makes sense. Two. Right. It makes sense, though, right? Because for most of Euro's history, we were a, you know, a UCR with a founder, right? So the delegate was not like a key position, um, except for uh, executing World Assembly votes. Um, Whereas in TNP, the delegate is the supreme authority game side and always has been. So it makes sense that our government structures have kind of diverged like that. And it's only now that Euro's changed, you know, 15 years after its founding and the delegates become uh, a more important security position that we have this like, you know, vestige of our old history kind of, you know, moving forward. But I don't think there are any plans to make the delegate uh, in president the same position, and I would not support that. I think that Euro's political and security apparatuses should be separate, you know, just because they're very different aspects of the game. People care about different things, and I don't think you should be required to care about security to do politics in Euro and vice versa. Interesting. So what's... Not to, not to shift the subject off of off of our governments. I, I actually, I, we I can... I'll ask this question. What's it been like kind of transferring from a a UCR as it was before to a stronghold now where, you know, kind of systems change and stuff like that? What's that transfer been like? Um, it was a lot. A lot of work. It's tough because euro for years had a very prolific um and heavily encouraged endotarding culture uh so we had you know dozens of nations with you know more than 100 endorsements i know that more than 100 endorsements doesn't sound like a lot for tnp but in euro where our delegate at the time of the transition had about 200 endorsements that was a pretty significant number what are you guys um, at now? You guys are what, 235? Mm. Um, and so when we went to become a frontier and we suddenly needed to have these significantly reduced endorsement caps, we had to really scramble to uh, communicate with all of these nations game side saying like, hey, you have four times more endorsements than you're allowed to now because we changed this, you know, and also you need to lose those all in the next like, you know, month before this transition happens because we kind of pushed off the uh, the decision of becoming a frontier until the last minute. Um, there was a, a really long debate in Euro about that from, you know, whenever Frontier Stronghold was announced uh, all the way up until literally weeks before the update actually dropped. Um, but that went through with pretty minor problems. We did definitely lose some WAs. Uh, a bunch went to like Europe, some went to TNP, uh, and a couple of other places. But most people uh, 
were pretty willing to, you know, pitch in and help out. So that was good. Um, and then since then, it's been mostly seamless. We have a pretty complex system of endorsement cast because nothing in Euro can be simple. Um, but we have a specialized endorsement swapping tool that takes all of our caps into account and helps people, you know, endorse or endotard, I guess, without uh, going over cap themselves or endorsing people who are going over their caps. So it's not that bad. Um, but the first, I'd say, like, three to six months were a pretty big scramble. Not to make, like, a, a pointed question, but how would you say the payoff has been after all that work so far? <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, not to ask a very like direct question, but um, out of curiosity, what's what's been the general? Maybe a better question is, what's the general regional perception been on on the payoff from becoming a stronghold? That's that's honestly a harder question to ask because we have not had a lot of uh, internal retrospective conversations about being a frontier yet. Part of it is just that you know it has quote unquote only been a little over a year. And, you know, whereas regions like, well, I mean, the, the feeders had, you know, almost 20 years, maybe over 20 years to kind of gather endorsements from nations that just kind of, you know, pop in every once in a while. You know, it takes a while to see the benefits from that as a frontier. Um, and also, I think the fact that we have kind of weathered the transition so well uh, and the fact that most Europeans have never really considered the security consequences of being a founderless region effectively um, means that, you know, it's just not on a lot of people's minds. So, so there's no pressure for them to think about those things. So that's probably a conversation that we need to have at some point. Um, I think that there has been some benefit. I'm not sure if the benefit is worth it myself yet, even, um, but I don't know. I think yeah, if you I, ask 10 different Europeans that question, you'd get 10 different answers right now. So It's interesting. Yeah, I'd never, I had never really thought that, you know, I, I've been in a GCR for my entire time, and I've actually been in, in this GCR uh, for my entire time in nation states. So I'd never really, I'd kind of thought about how we've had so long to, to develop this because, you know, TNP had kind of that rocky beginning until it kind of got its foothold and we put all these security things in place, like our security council and stuff that allowed us to operate in this founderless situation with, with relative security. Um, and it would kind of take a bit of, you guys would almost have to go through that same process, hopefully with not all the, the, the trials that we went through, but, um, you would definitely have to kind of go through this phase of transitioning from like, oh, we have a founder that can protect us from problems to, oh, we have to make sure our delegate doesn't get tipped or something. This is an interesting, um, an interesting change that I, I had never really thought about um, prior <coughs> to this. Um, but in that vein, um, the North Pacific, uh, naturally, you know, we... So yeah, we have we don't have the the Senate system, which I think is is quite interesting. Um, when you become a citizen in TNP, I don't know, do, does Euro have citizenship, or is that just any residents by default like a citizen of the region? No, we have citizenship. We do have citizenship. Okay, it's very similar to TNP. You know, we have the you have to post once a month on the forums to maintain your citizenship requirements. You know, keep a nation in the region. Um, so right, yeah. Because in, in TNP, once you're a citizen, default right to vote. Um, we have our, we don't do the confirmation, we don't have a confirmation system, which I think is also interesting. When we put up our, what we call the, the executive council or the executive cabinet, um, that's, that's picked by the delegate. That's, it's just, that's it. It's flat out. These are who we pick and, and no one has to really confirm them unless they... I think if it's yeah, if they're not a citizen, they have to go through um, and get like authorized by the the regional assembly because 
obviously there might be problems um in tmp you have to pass like an admin admin check to become a citizen that just makes sure that you're not like using multiple ip addresses um so uh, but if if you for some reason don't have like a residential ip and you'd want to be able to serve in public office or inside of like a, a higher position you have to be confirmed by the ra as like a a stamp of approval to bypass that check um otherwise we don't have a confirmation system delegate picks who they want and that's who it is um but we also have we elect our justices which is a bit different um actually we just recently had our like or last month we had our judicial elections um we, but we we do vote on election commission which is interesting um we'll we'll have like an, a regional assembly vote to pick election commission members but otherwise i i don't think any other position is is approved by the regional assembly um yeah we have other than that we just elect the the delegate the vice delegate and yeah um and a speaker speaker of the regional assembly we used to have the my brain was thinking we used to have um the ag a long time ago we had an attorney general um and oh god i don't even want to think about how many years ago it was because it's going to feel a lot longer than it that actually was, is i believe the agora act was 2020 yeah which feels a long time ago but it's actually not that long um That's yeah bad. we 2020 was forever ago yeah we got our we removed the ag and now we only elect speaker of the regional assembly whose job is to um like control the ra like make sure votes close on time make sure they open on time make sure people kind of stay um respectful in the halls of the regional assembly um when those arguments kind of get out of line it's their job to be like hey uh tone it down so um, how much do you guys have a i guess because you have a senate you don't really have like a speaker of the senate we it's do have a speaker. kind of we do That's, interesting yeah we do but the so do you the Senate picks the speaker, or do you elect the speaker? The Senate, the Senate speaker is elected by the Senate. Interesting. So That's... Once all of the senators um, are masked, the first act of the Senate usually is to do speaker nominations, and then people can be nominated. Uh, sitting senators, I should say, can be nominated. And then um, there's no like platforms or anything. It's not quite as large an election as our other ones. Um, but that is that is an elected position as well. Interesting. You have a you guys have quite a few elected positions. Um, we do. I think it, I think it's democracy. cool. I think it's yeah. You guys you you guys are we got a challenge for democracy here. Who who has more democracy, TNP or or Euro? Looking it's looking like Euro. The just sheer amount of democracy that you guys have. So, um, that's interesting. Um, how is here's an, here's a Another question: How is the role play of Euro set up? Because it's it's got a very unique setup here in TNP. Um, so how's this in TNP? I should preface, I guess, is um in TNP it's separate from the government, like entirely. Like it is TNP RP is like a completely separate entity that almost operates pretty much autonomously from the rest of like the region and the government. So how does it operate in Euro? Um, role play does not have nearly as much uh attention give it to it in euro as it does in other large regions um it has existed at points we have like a role play council right now um but activity definitely waxes and wanes um our role play council is not completely separate from the government like it is in tnp um, it exists under the umbrella of the executive but it's pretty distinct. Um, they they don't have elections. They they self uh, elect members uh, and carry on term by term. Um, so they don't need to to redo you know confirmations every seventy days or whatever like the rest of the government does. Um, and they you know maintain the map and the role play. Whatever whatever else goes into it. I'm not <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so outside of like moderation also i don't know i don't think tnp does um but we have a separate rmb uh basically like an empty region that we use for role play just to keep it uh, a little bit separated from our main rmb where other people are chatting about different things 
pretty frequently. Um, so, you know, the OOC moderation is the same. Um, and the RP Council is technically part of the executive, but besides that, it's pretty, you know, live and let live. Interesting. Yeah, TMP does not. TMP RP takes place in the same RMB that everybody else's RMB takes place in, um, which uh, is, is uh, I'm sure, a bit of a trip for the moderators. Um, because RP, we have a separate Discord for all of our RP. That's kind of what we sectioned it off as. Um, and it's, and we, our, it's like it's got its own moderation and everything. Our RP system is like completely separate from our government. And every once in a while, that comes up as a campaign issue. How are we going to integrate RP into the government? Or are we going to R integrate RP into the government? Or should we just leave them to their own devices? It becomes... It, the discourse is really annoying, and it's always the same conclusion every time, at least that I get from the RPers, which is leave them to their own devices. But with that said... Um, we've also seen some success with some programs that we've done with our peers, like the role play reels and um, the broadcasts that we've done uh, with various our peers through the Ministry of Radio over the years. Um, I, I think the, I think we have one of the, I, I, I don't want to say we have the best role play scene in nation states because I don't know much about the role play scene in nation states. But I would venture to say we're up there because of the the pure amount of depth and breadth of RP that's on our forums and on our RMB for that matter. There's so much RP, uh, and yes, it's. Um, I think I found that RP and TNP works best. TNP RP and the rest of TNP. I think you get. I think. I think you can get amazing things when it works together. Like whenever you're getting the region kind of advertising and like showing off RP, I think you get really good results. I've, I think at least, um, but I think it's generally the consensus in RP is leave us alone. Um, and kind of let us leave us to our own devices and let us play, let us play our game, uh, if you will. And GP can have its game. Um, I take it, due to your RP say, I take it Euro is a more, like, kind of GP-centric region? I guess in the grand scheme of, of the, like, the GP. I guess you have to be, but I'd imagine there's more GPers and RPers in Euro. Yeah, I would definitely say so. I think Euro is, like, I hesitate to call it a GP region. There are definitely people in Euro who care about gameplay, and I'm certainly one of them. But Euro has a very large population that just cares about Euro. You know, like, hmm. we we have people who are like, oh, yeah, like, I forgot that there were other regions in this game, you know? Like, they're just, you know, old, they've been around forever, they just talk in Euro, and it's like, whatever. Yeah, I, so. and that's why I think I'm happy to do these shows, because I think there's... There's a lot of people in, in TNP, myself included, I'm not going to even try to claim that I'm not one of them, who probably don't interact with the other regions as best, as much as they probably should. Because um, we have, like, TNP has a lot of allies, and there are a lot of regions in the game, and I think it's, I think it's important for people to interact with each other so we can kind of get a better understanding, especially for allies. I mean, like... Euro and TMP are long-standing friends and allies. We do a bunch of stuff together, and some people might not even know what Euro is or what its government is or how it works or who runs it. <laughs> so I think it's it's kind of it, it's good for us to come together, um, and talk. And it's something that I've I've hoped to do with other regions um, through the radio broadcast is just let us interact. Speaking of 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 radio, what? What kind of uh, shows does, does Euros or not? Yeah, Euros Radio put on. Um, yeah, I can say this. Um, it's it's quite a wide variety of um, shows, but that's something we do to in order to sort of entice newcomers into radio. Um, I think dumping a newcomer into a heavy, physically based show about um, 
the Senate or something is not particularly enticing for a newcomer. Um, so we have obviously our um, regional based shows where we talk about elections, poll results, the Senate, um, what's going on in the region. We also have our um, some real life political based shows. So we talk about um, when this time we've spoken about um, some of the elections that have happened, the UK election, the upcoming US election and the French election were all discussed this term. Um, and we also have our sort of fun uh, game shows. Um, but those are mainly to just, well, just increase the variety of what we do to um, make radio a bit more uh, fun, entertaining for, for newcomers. Um, so we've had some quizzes this term um, for people to get involved in. Um, we've also had um, something that occurs um, usually yearly, um, although uh, I'm not sure the, what the gap between the these last two were, we have, we have our power player drafts um, led by um, Calvin Coolidge and Sopo, usually with a guest. Um, we were gonna have a meme review this year, but we have not had the meme this year, uh, this term that we have, we did not have meme review, um, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, it, it is quite a large variety of shows. I'm so upset that you brought up power players before I could. <laughs> You guys talk and you guys talk about real life politics in your radio. That is uh, brave. Yeah, we do. <laughs> that, is, that is brave. I uh, I don't think I'd ever want to touch on that in, in radio. I would not address yeah. that in a voice capacity. Yeah, uh, yeah. built different. I have some balls for addressing that. Different gravy. <laughs> it's a it's a different domain. But yeah, let's see. Ex look at my question list here. We've gone through quite a bit of them. A lot of this was, a lot of this was to to talk about our, our various regional cultures. Um, we've we've expounded the list of questions. I'm thinking of of other questions. If the audience has questions, they're also welcome to ask any questions of of us for Euro people in the audience. If you have TMP questions and TMP is the audience, if you have Euro questions, or you're more than welcome to ask in the the in the in the little. We have a chat thing now, apparently, uh, over here, uh, like inside the actual stage itself, where you can type things. Um, we also have the the text channels. Also, hi Icarus. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, UPC wanted to talk about the power player um, draft. I didn't talk about the show entire. I just mentioned that we did it. So um, uh, oh. if you're interested, uh, UPC could perhaps go ahead and talk about um, what that is. Oh, I would be honored. Um, hmm, okay. So yeah, as Nate said, uh, it's run by, uh, well, at least historically run by some of our older members being uh, our founder, Hem and then Sopo and Calvin Coolidge. Um, and then more recently, they've also brought on Seva, who is one of our, he's not quite as old as them, but he's definitely uh, been around for a while. Um, so he knows what he's talking about generally. And uh, it's easier to get in contact with than him, which helps. Um, and basically they take a look at the movers and shakers in European politics at the time of the show. And they do like, uh, fantasy football style uh, snake round drafting uh, of who's going to be the most influential in Euro politics for the next six months to a year. Um, and then they, you know, explain their picks and like everyone goes over and, you know, oh, you know, that's a great pick. Here's why, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's very fun. It's typically like one of the most uh, attended shows in Euro just because everyone wants to hear these old people saying nice things about them. You know, uh, it's a lot of fun. Interesting. We hmm. maybe we maybe we should steal your idea. No, we do have a lot of old people in TMP who I think would be uh, if we can get them to to do it, would be very interesting to hear them discuss if, what they think of the newcomers of TMP. If you uh, do a TMP power players draft, please ping me so I can listen to it. I think that'd be <laughs> no. we can, especially with the um. With the election coming up, I, I have some election shows planned, so it might be interesting to do a power play right in the midst of the election. <laughs> that could exclusively go well, I think. That that can only go well. I agree with you. Um, We're planning it for tomorrow. 
Yeah, but generally our radio shows mostly consist. We've had round tables in the past. The RP spotlights have been have historically been very successful. Um, I've been in talks with some our peers about doing them. I need to like kind of reach out and see if we got any like cemented cases of people. Um, but we are you know we like to talk to the our peers and have them talk about what they do and then all the all the various things. But it's a lot of uh. A lot of RP talk, a lot of roundtables, a lot of interviews. I, I like to try to get older people in the region to talk about themselves and their past. I think it's kind of a nice way to A, preserve things, and B, just like, like get their story, you know, get their stories, listen to them talk. A, lot, a way for younger incoming people to interact with the older um, members. I guess an interesting question would be, um, what's like the percentage? What's the percentage of old people to young people in in T and P in Euro? Um, is T and P is T and P lately? I think has been. In terms I feel of like old people to young people. I, I feel like a lot of. I think there's a very, very established uh, group of old people that just stick around in T and P. But I would argue there is a a larger flow of new blood coming in lately. Like there's more new faces now than I've ever seen in T and P. I think. Like, maybe more now more so in the last like couple in the last couple of years for sure i think but... we probably saw more activities at the lower levels during sawale's term still but like I, I i you're right in so far as i don't think we've seen this level of new blood for a couple for a couple of years so um from our side uh, also the the um the newcomer thing is very much prevalent in, in our region as well. We have had a quite a large influx of um, newcomers into the region. Um, so that has shifted the balance. Um, I think for quite a while we sort of stagnated a little bit in terms of newcomers who came in and were actually active and have remained active throughout their time here. Um, Europia um, not, doesn't do much anymore, um, but we used to run censuses um, done by Prim, um, so I actually do have statistical data in this data from 2023. So it's, it's about a year out of date now. But um, so a year ago, our no, I know everyone here is a boomer. That yeah. I don't know. So in in the 2023 census that Nate's referring to, it's split pretty evenly between like three months. To a year and then like one to two years, three to four, five to nine, and ten plus years. Um, but over well over half the population is under four years old in terms of like length of time playing in it. Uh, it's close to like 70 percent. Um, that makes more so sense. We will probably have another census soon, so maybe we can provide you with some updated numbers, but um. And this is this is based on fifty four respondents. That'd be an interesting thing to learn. Yeah, I'd be I'd be interested to see because I mean that that actually that's data that's data on form tracks as well. Like we can see on a person's account, I think their their age. Yeah. But it'd be an interesting stat to kind of pull. Um, but it, I not exactly a one to one correlation either because it's just the registration date on our forum. True. People could have people could have been on NS well before they they came to TNP. Um, Euro, I imagine, has kind of like, the, we call them in TNP like our old guard, you know, kind of people who have been in the region for a long time and kind of, you always you always know they're there. Um, for instance, one of them is in the audience now, uh, uh, Palith or oh, Ghost. Ghost. Um, kind of what, one of the people I consider to be the old, one of the old guards, quote unquote, of FTNP, you know, people who have been around for a long time and, and you know, you always can find them in, in position. So does Bureau kind of have like a bunch of figures like that that you consider kind of old guard? Naturally, I imagine your founder is one of them. Yeah, well, he he is, but he hasn't been serving in government a ton recently. Um, I heard a rumor that he might be next term, but I think something came up and his plans changed. So that's unfortunate. Um, we definitely do have our own old guard. I like to call them the man, um, in the sense that the man is keeping me down. Um, <laughs> um, although 
a lot of them have kind of been, you know, for the last, I mean, five years, really, been saying, you know, hey, we're going to, you know, step away now. Really, this is it. We're leaving. Please take over. And then they come back three months later. So, you know, I'm sure that cycle will continue <laughs> for another five to ten years at least. I can't wait for McMaster Donia to come back <laughs> for another two years and then go away again. But yeah, uh, it's very interesting. Um, our regions, it's it's our regions are very similar, kind of fascinatingly similar, really. Um, with just, I, it's crazy how two regions can have been created at different times through different circumstances, but end up having very similar cultures and governments and uh, just all kinds of of similarities. Really, kind of. You know, and also the two best forums on nation states. Yeah, like <laughs> true. Like we really are just like it's two of the same, really. There's a there's a certain saying I'm trying to think of, and my brain is just losing it on what you call like three regions. I guess we kind of go hand in hand, the two of us do, uh, as regions. I don't know. I didn't really set a set length for this. I was just kind of going into a we we talked out all questions and and content that we had. Um, I don't know. Whenever we we wanted to round up, it's been an hour. Uh, yeah. I don't know how long. I don't how long do these these usually go on for? Uh, I think. I think you saying that sounds like it's probably a good time to yeah to I suppose again. yeah it's time do do but, a last yeah. call for audience questions yeah right? if if the audience has any any questions so I know somebody asked if if the new blood is kind of an NS wide thing and in, in uh, I believe it's Maui that's how I'm going to say it um asked about that and I I hope it is I I think in NS has kind of weird ebbs and flows where all of a sudden out of nowhere. In S, we'll just get like this. Numbers, it doesn't look like it, but I don't know. Like it happens, you'll just get this like weird, massive wave of new blood pumped into nation states, and then it will just like peter off, and then another massive wave of of new blood will come into TNP, um, or not just TNP, all of an S. Usually, a YouTuber says something about the, about the game, and then we get an influx. Um, I'm waiting for Drew Dernal to do another video. Oh yeah, and, and now that Euro's a stronghold, you'll get to feel the effect of it. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> you'll get to feel the blunt of it what when Drew Donald does another. Thought. You'll get to deal with all the Drew people coming in. Oh, thanks for that. Yeah. And are you no, happy you became a stronghold? Tonight. Another person I would consider to be part of TNP or a, a former member of TNP's old guard, Westinor is in our audience. Is in our audience. Hi, West. At least I think it's Westerner. And I just say former because they are no longer a citizen. Because it's my game. For some reason, all of my discords are bugging out, but people are here. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I think it's... I think it'll be interesting to see. And it'll definitely be interesting to see how Euro kind of... How Euro continues to grow following um, their transfer into a big stronghold. Um, but I think that that just about wraps up the great discussion between uh, our two little regions. Two little regions. Uh, our two regions. Um, two fairly thank you. large regions. Two, yeah, two decently large regions. Are you? How large are you compared to the other UCRs? As I imagine, Euro is one of the bigger UCRs. One. What were um, we? What were the biggest for um, a brief period of time at one point? Um, in terms of sheer population, uh, like like all nations, not just WAs, we are probably the first or second largest if you don't count puppet dumps. Yeah. Um, in terms of WA population, I think we are, we're definitely behind TCB. I don't know if there's anyone else ahead of us right now. Kind of what Europe. I thought. I, you guys are, are kind of one of the premier UCRs. Did you guys hear so... my air conditioner during that? No. No. <laughs> no. Um, Good. Yeah. Um, my system is working. Thank you, uh, thank you both so much for for joining us on our our little discussion, discussing the the great differences between our our regions and our great similarities.
Thank you so Great. much for having us. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. It's been a pleasure as well. Uh, for all those listening, thank yeah. Thank you so much.